today. Um, oh, you can't even see. Can't even see the bridge title. Hang on. Okay, let's back this up. There we go. Let's aim this down a little more. Hey, there we go. So I finished uh, making the warp for my rigid heddle last week. So here's my warp. And my back is still hurting. And I was taking a nap and I woke up a little late, which is why. Yeah, this is a little bit late. Um, let's see, what else did I do? So I made sure that I took my apron rod and um, don't think I don't really need this anymore. Move it out of my warping helper. So this is my warping helper. And this is my back apron rod here. And uh, I made sure that um, I took my apron rod and I distributed uh, my loops as evenly as possible and uh, made sure that I distributed my uh, warp itself as evenly as possible too. Oh, I can see that I have one that's in the wrong spot though. Fix that. And I also have an issue because usually when, you, um, when you're putting on a warp, um, you have to get somebody to help you, but I don't really have anyone to help me. So that means that I have to figure out how to kind of do it myself, which is fine. Uh, so I was going to borrow a couple of dumbbells from my husband, but it turns out that they were too heavy for me to move by myself with my back issues. So, um, yeah, I just kind of decided that I was going to wing it. So we're winging it today and I have tied um, the ends of my warp to a bag that has a bunch of yarn in it to weight it down. And uh, my warp ended up kind of funky colors and not really even, um, even colors either because, uh, well, I ended up with, um, you know, not enough yarn in certain areas. And I didn't really care because I'm just playing with it. So I kind of went, eh, who cares? So anyway, um, so I bought some stuff that I wanted to show you that we'll be using today. Um, and this is not weighted right, so I can see this is way, way too loose. So I've got to move some stuff around. Um, but hey, everybody. So yeah, so I bought this stuff, um, which is like that shelf liner for your like shelves, shelving. And it's kind of squishy. Um, as warp packing material because you have to have something to put in between your layers so that um, you don't end up with tension issues, although I'm already going to have tension issues if I don't get this taken care of. Uh, anyhow, and I didn't cut it, that way I could talk to you about this, but um, it's important that when you are making your um, warp or your warp pieces uh, that you are cutting um, your warp pieces, so, or excuse me, your warp packing, so that it fits on your beam uh, and is wide enough that it extends beyond the ends of your piece, but um, you also want to make sure that it isn't so wide that um, it extends over the edge of um, your loom. Oh gosh, that word was not coming. So I have my paper cutting scissors. I'm not going to use my good fabric scissors for this, but I have my paper cutting scissors for this. And I can also see that I need to kind of adjust. So I'm going to move my pawl just a little bit. Yeah, I need to adjust this a little. So I can see that I have kind of an angle on my rod here. So what I'm going to do is just sort of pull the end towards me that needs some extra help and then I am going to loosen up my apron string. That's why it's nice to have a string like this too. And see if I have done a little better job there. That looks better. Because I want this to be as um, parallel to my back beam as possible. 
And remember, we're going to wind everything onto the back beam so that um, as we are creating fabric and it's moving forward onto the front beam, um, that everything comes together because we can't move it backwards onto the back beam. Um, because that just doesn't work. It's not how weaving works. So anyway, the first thing that I'm going to do is make uh, this piece of packing material pretty much as wide as uh, my beam and the nice thing about this stuff is there's really handy little holes so I know that I'm going to cut it straight because there's handy little holes so I'm not going to screw it up. Um, I was watching Tammy Poff's videos and she's the one that said that um, one of her students had suggested this in a class and I thought, oh, okay, that's really interesting. I want to try that. And the nice thing is, um, if for some reason it doesn't work, well, I just still have some nice shelving liner. Um, the other thing that I kind of liked about this stuff was that it was reusable, so I should be able to use it time and time again um, as I weave more. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. Um, and anyway, I think I'm just going to go ahead and like, cut all of these for now and call it good and cut them there. And again, I'm not using my good fabric scissors because that would be just, you know, wrong. Like, wrong. So, oh, I'm kind of excited to show you guys some more lace history on Monday. Um, I'll be really excited when all of this snow melts here because right now it is deep enough that um, I, I don't I just I don't really like it <laughs> um, and it's been super cold and I've been very fortunate that the rabbits have been fine and the ducks are you know dealing with it they aren't exactly happy but they're dealing with it um, but they really miss having liquid water and um, I really miss like not having to constantly carry water out to them and carry frozen buckets back to the house. Um, yeah. And the outside cat has been like venturing up to the house a little bit. He likes to come up and beg to come in. I know you've all seen Charlie because he shows up when I have my videos outside. Um, yeah. Okay, and I don't think this one is wide enough for this piece, but I don't think I will need it. But I'm not going to throw this away because I can use this for a skinnier piece. So, all right, now we have all of our pieces ready to go. So now comes the fun part. Uh, so part of what I need to do is make sure that, yes, my apron rod looks good. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to adjust the tension on this because I can see this is way too loose. So I need to, I probably need to put a second bag on that or something, or maybe I'll tie it to this stool and tie it separately so that uh, it can hang. And I'll show you my poor janky little setup over here. Um, and as I get ready to wind on, I'm going to just take my piece here. I can also see it's a little bit tighter on this end. Oh, that's why. <laughs> also helps if you make sure that your apron rod is properly placed because it needs to go inside. Oh, it looks much better now. <laughs> there, this makes this a little bit. Tensioning is always the one of those things that you kind of struggle with as you're getting started, um, you know, with the winding on and all that good junk. So um, if you need to, there's no reason why you can't just um, unravel or unwind, don't unravel, but unwind your back beam a little bit and then bring it forward and, and reset again um, to get started. You don't want to do that once you are further along, but um, as you're getting started, not that big a deal. So I am going to, actually I don't want to put that in yet. All right. Let's fix our tension issues. I'll show you what I've done. It's kind of sad. Um, it's kind of sad. Oh yeah, we're going to use this instead. Okay. 
So here behind me. Do, 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 do. I don't know. You see this? Not really. Yeah, so here is my Ikea sawhorse that I was using. And here's my warp tied to a bag. And that's just not working well enough. So I'm going to take this side off. And what I really wanted to do was use a lark's head knot on this guy and um, throw it over a dumbbell and then just leave the dumbbell on the floor. <laughs> but that idea is clearly not going to work. So I'm going to untie my end here. And I did not cut my loops. I left my loops as they were because as I was reading in my inventive weaving book, it's a good idea to leave your loops whole uh, so that you can always grab um, just those two strings and retention if you need to. So, and yeah, I'm just kind of finger combing this down. I am just going to, I think, go ahead and maybe tie this to my, this might be too heavy. Oh well, we're going to try it out tie this separately and I have just I mean all I've done is just loop loop my loops over that's it and um, and I'm actually not going to tension them on this I'm just gonna let them sit on the floor now because they have some weight behind them and hopefully it'll be enough weight oh yeah it feels good on my back not be enough weight. There we go. All right, now I'll show you what's happened. So now hopefully you can see that the weight is a lot better and it's pulling more evenly here and it's not as heavy there. So I'm just going to give this a little tug, try to straighten it up a little bit. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to move it forward. That's the goal. As we wind it up. Okay. So I need to adjust that a little bit. This is great on my back today, I'll tell you. There we go. I did find my little old weaving stool down here. My weaving and spinning stool, which is nice. So I'm going to take this and put it in uh, so that it's bumpy side up, so that it has just a little more grab, but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to get this started and I just want to get it to where it's actually not working too bad. The bag and the stool are kind of moving forward together. Um, just want to start moving it around. So now here I am and I have moved my back beam around so that my apodron is on the front and I have the very first wrap of my work coming around. Now this is the time when I want to stick in my work packing material and usually you are told to um, not to I should say not to hold this beam and roll it because this is, I mean, this is true. Um, when you hold this beam and you roll it, you can wind on unevenly. And I totally get that. But just to get this started, and you see it kind of just like settled right in there, didn't it? And it's pretty even, it's pretty straight. Hopefully it won't go off the rails now and get all wonky donkey. Um, I'm just moving this over slightly. This one has, this one has more tension on this side. Okay, I gotta go scooch that bag back a little bit further. Um, anyway, this is now all set up and ready to go so that we can wind on. And really, it's just keeping tension. That's all I'm trying to do is keep tension today on my uh, warp and try to keep it an even tension so that uh, I don't have one side that's you know tighter than the other. A little bit better. All right, and now I'm going to switch to using uh, this. Oh, I can see what happened. 
my sawhorse got in the way. There we go. Do, do, do. All right, nice. And look, my packing's going in nice and easy. My warp's decent. Yeah. Doesn't have a ton of tension on it, but it's got some. That's the important thing. And then, of course, as you keep going, oh yeah, I'm not doing that right there. Ah, out at the edges. Okay. Getting some more tension on that. Not terrible. But as you keep going, I just want to keep watching my packing material. Checking the warp as it's coming on. Doesn't look terrible. Doesn't look terrible. And then as I get to the end of my packing material, I'm going to want to make sure that I put another piece in. So, got my next piece. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to set it here. And then bring it up and under. So that it's just setting in line with the old piece. Give it just a little turn to get stuck tucked in there. slightly off so we'll just reset this piece a little bit there now I'm gonna go check the tension on my bag and my <laughs> and my stool that's coming along here this looks all right and I have a feeling it's gonna bump into this so I'm just gonna move this slightly hopefully you can still see me oh good everybody's still there yes all right now I'm gonna wind my warp on again and I have, I should have said this earlier, I have my reed in the down position on the front uh, so that um, it gives me just a little bit of pull and it doesn't fall off the front. So like when you are using your reed, um, I really didn't want to keep it in the top position. This is a very, you know, wobbly position. So I knew I needed um, to put it in the down position. And what's nice is that uh, you do have two options for where you keep your reed to start with on this because this is the um, double heddle. So it does allow you to have two sets of um, heddles on here, two sets of the same reed if I wanted to do that. And uh, potentially I you know, might do that in the future. I'm, like I said, just playing with the eight dent reed right now. Uh, so anyway, I chose to put it in the down position on the front so that it was kind of like ready to go. Um, anyway, now I'm just winding this up. Who would have known the bag of yarn? Watch that, it's kind of wobbling over to one side. But a bag of yarn and, um, <laughs> and my old stool would uh, give me enough tension. So this is this is unfortunate now my packing material is coming in a little bit diagonally so I gotta keep an eye on this. Move this over just a smidgy, which of course it sticks, which is nice. And it's thin, which is nice. But uh, yeah, that's better. And, okay, and I can see I have one thread here that is not tensioned properly. So I'm gonna take a moment and track that one down. It's another thing you gotta keep an eye on. This one does not have enough tension on it. So I'm gonna take my bag and adjust my tension. Okay. See this one? Yeah, there. Pops back in. And one piece that definitely did not have enough tension on it. The nice thing about still having all the loops in it, as recommended by my book, is that uh, I can keep working on them without fear of all the little pieces popping open. Hi, I'm live. Oh. Right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be done in a little bit.
That was my husband. He was like, why did you need a dumbbell? Well, it's all right. I'm making do. All right, there we go. So now I have adjusted this and taken my loops out. And I'm going to go ahead and hang my bag back on and weight it down. There, that looks better. Now it doesn't look like I've got that one thread that's trying to run away from me. All right. Okay. Not too bad, not too shabby. Oh, look, we're almost to the end of our second piece as well. Okay. Tension looks decent. Uh-oh, I went too far. Okay. So this is one thing I didn't want to have to do. I don't recommend this, but every so often it happens. I went too far before putting in my next piece of packing, and now my tension's going to be a little bit off, but that's all right. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm good. I made different weights. I can save life if you want it. Okay, I only need it for this. All right, let's put the new piece of packing in, like so. There we go. Get it started. Oh, there. Actually, that went in. That went in all right. It feels okay. It's not too bad. I don't know. So, do you guys have any questions about uh, my process here? It's kind of entertaining watching me uh, wind on my little warp and make mistakes and <laughs> we're getting close to the end which is good because I don't have a ton of packing material left here either. Um, let's see. No we picked the others. What am I using for the warp? Um, well I don't know so I <laughs> haven't really decided yet. Uh, so I still have some leftover colors. I have um, some purple in here and red and um, this kind of weird brownie color and pink and um, anyway, I kind of think it's just going to be this really, really random uh, warp. Um, just of like whatever leftover colors I happened to have. Um, because that's kind of how it's trending at the moment. And it kind of looks like I should have uh, ordered a second. Uh, second. 10 foot piece. So I may try to use that short piece of packing and just see if I can squick it out this time. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I'm just, I'm really, I have all of these leftovers and all of these ends and um, because I've been knitting and crafting for so long, like look, I have this pink and this blue. There's a little bit of this gray and I've got this like black and white. And, um, and I have a few, I do have a few like full skeins of this left still. Um, so right now I'm just planning on kind of winging it and I'm going to see how far I can get with all of my little ends. And then if I don't have enough, then I'll crack into the full skeins, but I'll break them so that I do like a chunk of them and that I get striping funkiness because this is a learning piece and it's a way for me to kind of dabble and get back into and remember how to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm totally gonna let Ina weave with me. Um, so that will also mean that it'll be kind of weird because <laughs> it'll be Ina weaving with me. Uh, but I think she'll get a kick out of it. Um, so we may end up doing like one of these a little early one day so that Ina can participate um, and help me weave, but we'll see. Oh yeah, totally gonna have to use that last piece of packing that was a tiny bit short, but that's, you got what you got, so that's what I'm gonna go with now. Um, really, my packing material, again, should be wider than my warp, uh, which it is, but just barely. So just keep that in mind. Um, I only ordered a 10 foot roll and I clearly needed to order two 10 foot rolls since I had to cut it. Um, because, yeah, you can hear my guy fall over. At least I've had good, reasonable tension on this with my, um, <laughs> it's so entertaining to me. 
With my bag of yarn and my, uh, yeah, and my stool. Let's see if I can get a little more length out of this. And the other thing is that I clearly, apparently, when I warped this, warped it longer on one side than the other. Um, which, you know, whatever. It is what it is, and I'm just going to go with it. And, you know, you can always cut some off. It's not a huge deal. Again, I'm using leftovers. It's not like I had a target and I was trying to use you know, 500 yards of yarn or whatever, but it's always good to get more yarn than you think you'll need for your project because, um, like, there are calculators that you can use. Um, I think there's one on the Tammy Poff website where you can calculate how much yarn you need for your warp and your weft based on how wide your project is and your depth per inch, ends per inch, um, as well as your picks per inch, but I didn't do that. I'm flying by the seat of my pants and just you know, having fun with it. Can you start to see the, uh, the stool? I think you can hear it. And my bag of yarn that are uh, coming to get us. Um, honestly, considering what this is, it's fine. Um, there we go. Here they come. There. <laughs> Hopefully you can see. The stool has come all the way up, and so has my bag of yarn. And, um, yeah, and I've also wound my extra piece in kind of off to one side. Maybe I should release and redo that section. Nah. Meh. I don't care. I don't care. I have to redo, redo it. Um, actually, maybe I should. Okay, maybe I do. I do care just enough to redo it because I can see have some issues on one side. So we'll take the bag and we'll throw it a little further out. Grab the tension back on it. There. Don't want it to get too far off on this. There we go. That looks better. So yeah, isn't that entertaining watching <laughs> Kelly make do because I couldn't find what I needed. Um, but that happens all the time. And um, now that I'm to this point, I am going to take my weights off. And um, I can also see that I am just about to the end of um, just about to the end of my last piece of packing material, which is fine. And in addition to that, um, you know, I'm almost to the point where it's time to slay the reed, which we're not doing today. My back is definitely not up for that today. There we go. Um, but we do have to cut all of our loops and slay the reed. So I'll be doing that next week. Um, there we go. I'll take the tension off at some point. There we go. Not ideal, but we made it work. And that's my front apron rod, which we don't need right now. So I'll just find that up out of the way. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, I can see I clearly have one loop that's much shorter than the others, so I am going to definitely have to cut my uh, warp a little shorter. Because, and that's all right, whatever. It's a few inches, it's no big deal. Um, I suppose I could live dangerously and tie it on with another piece. But anyway, uh, this is this is what I'm going to cut and slay next week. Um, and then we'll get that uh, tied on as well. I won't do the whole slaying. Um, I am gonna wind this just a smidgen more. Um, doesn't have quite the tension, but that's all right because it'll end up being tensioned more when I tie it onto the front apron rod. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this stuff, it really seemed to wind in easily. Um, I did have the one piece that tried to go wonky, but that's that's kind of normal with any packing material. You just have to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't want to uh, take off diagonally. And uh, yeah, that's about as far back as I can take that at the moment, which is fine because this one clearly has a short piece. So um, I will need to cut all of my ends 
and then slay the reed. And what that means is next week we're going to take this and we're going to take all of the doubles that we put through the slots and we are going to make them singles in the slots. So it'll be one in the slot and then one in the hole. I know it's really hard to see, but on here there is actually a hole in each of these um, uprights in between the slots so that that allows you to um, have your eight ends per inch. Um, but when you are first winding on and warping with the direct warp and fork method, you make sure that you put um, two ends or one big loop through each of the slots. So um, next week we get comfortable with the uh, reed hook again, the weaver's uh, hook, and yeah, it'll be all kinds of fun. We're getting there, slow and steady, right? Slow and steady. Um, so once I have slayed the reed and um, we tie it on, then we actually get to the weaving. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the short, short time today uh, of weaving with Kelly and relearning how to weave with my rigid heddle loom. Um, remember Mondays we are doing our history of lace. Um, I'm going to pull up some photos for you guys and talk more about that history of bobbin lace with some examples on Monday. Let me scoot back a bit. And then um, next Wednesday again we'll be slaying and then um, the Monday following that. Um, hmm, should we do history of tatting? Mm -hmm. History of tatting is kind of short um, because it's a much younger art. Um, but we do have to do tatting and we have to do Mediterranean bobbin, I'm not, sorry, me, not tat, Mediterranean knotted not bobbin, knotted lace, um, because it's a needle lace. So we need to look at both of those. And then we need to look at knitting. And knitting is probably going to take at least two sessions. Um, it's going to take one session, but you know, I honestly, I could spend like 30 minutes talking about each different um, lace style. And then yeah, it wouldn't be a stretch because I do love my lace knitting and it's snowing again here. Sorry, I have big windows downstairs and I happen to look out and I'm very disappointed that it's snowing again. I'm so tired of the snow. I'm really tired of slogging out and taking care of the ducks. I live in St. Louis, if, you, if I haven't said that before or you haven't been following along long enough to know that. We don't get this much snow. We don't have this like extended cold and like it'll dip down to, you know, negative five or negative 10, two or three days, maybe. Uh, some years it doesn't even do that. Some years the lowest it gets is like 15, you know, which is still cold. I'm not saying it's not cold, but sometimes we never even dip into the negatives. But this year has just been like misery in Missouri. And um, I'm kind of done, I'm kind of tired of it. And I, I am definitely ready for our normal weather. I'm really, really glad that uh, we're getting mm -hmm. out of it, that I only have like four more days of junk. <laughs> um, and then hopefully I can, yeah, get back into my usual, like, I mean, it's not exactly warm here, but you know, 30s and 40s is acceptable versus like zero and five. and. Like we had three days in a row, I think, where it did not get above, it wasn't even double digits. It was like a high of five or three, or seven. It was awful. So do not recommend, do not like. Um, anyway, but we've been warm and fine and the animals are all warm and fine, except for the duckies. But I mean, the duckies have down feathers, so they just have to suck it up a little bit. And I just take them out, you know, fresh water several times a day. Um, Oh, really, Kathy? Clackamas County still being restored? Yeah I, yeah, I believe it. I have a bunch of rabbit friends that, um, you know, have been talking about they lost, like, giant old oak trees and Douglas fir trees and all kinds of stuff that just couldn't take the ice. The ice just took them down. Just gone. So, that's terrible. Anyway, don't forget all the fun things that we have going on. So um, Tina has released her Fairy Rings kit. It is available up on the website. If you get our, our newsletter, you should have seen that today. Um, the pattern is free. If you just have some mohair silk hanging around in your house and you're looking for a fun pattern to do, it's on Ravelry. It's our Fairy Rings. You can find it with um, Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, um, or you can find it under Tina Johnston. That'll help you find it too. So. 
um, fairy rings is up patterns free for a month so it's free until st patrick's day which i believe is march 17th right and then um it'll go to a paid pattern after that we have kits for it super fun little kits they're hand dyed by lara of um, blazing fibers and she did four themed colorways so you have winter summer spring and fall and um, you get three patterns and three colors with every kit and that's really fun because um, it makes little stackable um, fairy ring cowls and you knit them on a size 10 and a half so they don't take very long I talked Tina into doing a knit along with one of them uh, mid-march so once she goes back to Arizona she's going to do a fun little um, fairy ring cowl and just kind of walk you guys through that which is fun and um, yes Tamara that's correct <laughs> it's such a slug um, yeah like it rained a ton and the duckies were like swimming in their paddock which is grass they aren't supposed to be able to swim in that um, just before like three days before we started to get the freezing temperatures and the snow we had like torrential rains and downpours here it's just been a really, really cruddy winter to start with. Um, anyway, so yeah, super fun fairy rings, really fast, a uh, little kit, little cowl. Let's see what else is going on. Year of self-care, don't forget your year of self-care. I forgot to bring my sweater down here, but it's basically done except that I have to just keep going on the body. So the sleeves are done, the neckband is done, and I'm just working my way down the body. I am still in the second ball of yarn. I don't know when I will be out of my turquoise love, um, but it's going to be a big band at the bottom of turquoise going into the orange. Um, so yeah, that's still happening. Uh, make sure that you're posting for your year of self-care. The fairy rings would count because mohair and silk is definitely luxury for February. So I'm just throwing that out there, hint, hint. Um, what else happened? Oh, the books came, the lace books came, the beautiful Estonian lace books came. So those, um, that price is going up. If you're faster than me, you could still get it at the um, pre-order price if you go in and buy it like right after the live today. Um, and don't forget that Tina is on on Fridays and she's going to be chatting about all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what all she's got on her list, but um, color work and crochet and, and fun stuff. And, um, oh, and our shipment is on its way from Japan. And we also ordered some books. So if you want a copy of that inventive, um, let's see, what is it? Inventive little weaving or whatever it is that I keep showing. Um, by Sign Mitchell, then you can get a copy because we ordered one so that I can have a personal copy instead of continuing to borrow the library's copy forever and ever and ever here. And um, we also, what else did we get? I don't know, we got like some Shishiko books because we like the Shishiko. And we also got some, um, I think some Selbu knitting, knitting, Selbu mitten knitting books. Boy, that is not coming out. Um, and some Norwegian knitting, again, color work, because I'm like kind of into the color work at the moment, um, especially with the, which you haven't seen yet, but it's so awesome, the finished slow yarn crawl pattern for Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, and we are a bonus region shop, so there's only two shops in the bonus region, uh, so if you buy from both of those shops, because they're both online shops, and you get your passport stamped, then you can, um, enter for the bonus region drawings. There's only two shops in the bonus region, which is really fun. Uh, and you can find out more about the Slow Yarn Crawl at slowcrawl.com. I've been working on that as well because it all has to happen, but my back has certainly thrown a wrench in things. And the cold and snow has thrown a wrench in my motivation as well. So um, I'm working on all of it. It's just taking me longer than it normally would. So anyway, I am going to um, get up off the floor here and go heat up the hot pack that I constantly have um, on my back right now to try to make it feel better. And I'm probably going to go take more nap until Ina gets up because I have not been sleeping well since my back hurts. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go take more nap until she wakes up. And then I'm gonna go deal with some frozen water and some duckies again. So anyway, um, I will see you guys next week when the weather should be much nicer here, even if it's still like cold, it should be a lot warmer. 
and um, hopefully you all are staying warm and crafting and taking care of yourselves and please do take care of yourselves physically mentally emotionally um, craftually spiritually if that's what you need and make sure that if you do have to go out that you are um, just being very careful if you're anywhere that it's cold which is most of the US right now please dress appropriately make sure that you have emergency supplies in your vehicle or with you when you go out so that's you know make sure you have water make sure that you have some kind of like little snacky foods tucked in your purse or your bag or whatever in your car it's good to have a blanket um, you know just just make sure that you're taking care of yourself they, there's all kinds of emergency kits out there that you can purchase or you can put together and uh, just please take care of yourself um, you know and remember if you are down south not to run your car for too long um, carbon monoxide poisoning is a thing and I know you're trying to stay warm but please please be safe and um, you know just add on the layers as much as possible to stay warm instead of trying to run your car um, kind of the rule of thumb is you only run it like 10 to 15 minutes for an hour up here so um, and I used to live in northern Indiana where it was you know much snowier much much colder um, but honestly it's been colder and snowier in st. Louis pretty much than it has been uh, in in northern Indiana for the last week which kind of sucks um, yes that's an excellent point Tamara do not cook with barbecues and camping stoves in your house either uh, if you do happen to have a fireplace, if you've not used it in a long time, do not try to use it now because there's, it's very likely that your fireplace is blocked. It may have creosote buildup, so just like just be very careful, people. I know it's cold, and I know that you want to stay warm, um, but you really have to take care of yourself and your things, too. Uh, I don't want to hear that my crafters, you know, have passed away because they, you know, were trying to stay warm and, and did something that ended up in their death. So... Be smart. Be smart peoples. You know, we're crafters. We should, we should, gotta be smart peoples. So, okay, that kind of like derailed there at the end. But be safe and take care of yourselves. And, um, and I will see you on Monday. And don't forget that Tina will be here on Friday. And if you're not already on our newsletter list or you haven't subscribed to any of our channels, please go subscribe and follow us. Make sure that you hit the like for our page that you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, that you have followed us on Instagram and TikTok. I'm putting up some fun little things on TikTok with little one minute like how-to videos um, almost every day. So I'll see you guys next week.